In today's video, I'm sharing with you editing tips that I wish I knew when I first started out. And I also asked some of my editing YouTube friends if they could share some tips as well. So you're definitely going to want to watch till the end to see all of the tips. Also, a special thanks to our friends over at Storyblocks. I'm going to tell you more about their awesome new plugin later on. For now, let's go ahead and jump on in. <laughs> So the first tip is nesting clips. For example, here inside of Premiere Pro, I want to apply a 3D motion effect to the screen recording. But you can see I have two clips and then I also have this graphic yellow arrow as well. And I want the 3D motion to affect all of these clips, but I don't want to have to apply the same effect to each individual clip. So this is where nesting comes in handy. So I can lasso and select all of the clips, right click and select nest and then press OK. Now all of those clips are nested as one layer. So now I can go up to effects and search for 3D basic and underneath perspective we can double click to apply it to the nest. And now we can animate the basic 3D effect. But first let's go ahead and scale in a bit and move the position over so it's more centered in screen. So once we get the position and the scaling correct, we can go down to swivel and let's change the swivel amount to around minus 57 so it's at a nice angle. And then we can choose the starting point for the tilt. In this case, I'll leave it at zero and tilt over time. So let's enable keyframes by clicking on the stopwatch and then we can move forward towards the end of the clip and then we can slightly reduce the swivel, let's say to minus 51 and then we can reduce the tilt to minus nine, for example. And now between these two points, we're seeing a change to the swivel and the tilt. And we can see that it affected that animating arrow, which was a separate clip. And now we have this basic 3D effect on this singular nest and we didn't have to apply it to each clip. And now we have some wise words from Valentina V director and filmmaker and cinematographer, but also a pro in Premiere Pro. All right, Valentina, what is your tip? The loop playback feature is huge, and I only discovered it a few years ago. Basically, if you want to keep rewatching the same little part of your edit to make sure it flows well or what have you, you can set in and out points on your timeline. And if you have loop playback enabled, it will just loop that section over and 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 over again, instead of having to manually go back click your mouse, put your playhead at the beginning, play it through, stop it, then go back, play it through. So it just saves time. Another tip that has saved me so much time is conversion LUTs. So if you shoot in log footage or you're editing log footage, rather than playing around with all of the different sliders to bring back in the color, you can use a log to rec 709 LUT. Now, if you go to my website, there's a blog called free log to rec 709 conversion LUTs. And if you click on download free LUTs, it'll take you to this awesome site by Bounce Color where you can scroll down and it provides all of these free conversion LUTs for all these different camera profiles. So after you download it, you'll get a folder of all of these dot cube files. And that is a LUT, which stands for lookup table. Essentially, it's basic math that basically converts the log footage into the correct rec 709 color space, which is what you're used to seeing that's more vibrant and has more contrast. From Lumetri Color, you can go to basic correction, input LUT. Now I've already imported all of these correction LUTs, but if you don't have them preloaded here, you can click on browse and go to that folder and find the Panasonic V-Log to Rec. 709 and hit open. And bam, look at that. It just looks so much better. So this is the after, before. All right, here's Becky from Becky and Chris. If you're not following Becky and Chris on YouTube, you are missing out on their photography and helicopter adventures and home renovations. All right, Becky, give us your tip. The J-Cut and the L-Cut is an editing technique that you can implement right now for better video pacing and better storytelling. So here's how it works. Say we're playing our B-roll montage to music, and then the next clip is a talking head, kind of like this one. The J-Cut is if we start playing the audio from the talking 
talking head before we actually see the talking head. So you're gonna see your B-roll clip, you're gonna hear the A-roll, but you're not gonna see the A-roll until a few moments later. So if you look at that in the timeline, it looks like a J. That's the J cut. The L cut is kind of the opposite of that. It's when your A-roll's audio continues on even after the B-roll starts playing. If we look at that in the timeline, that looks like an L. So that's an L cut. If these video editing tips are helping you out, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're watching this and you're like, oh, I have a tip to share, don't be shy. Leave a comment just down below and share it with the community. So when I first started editing, there wasn't an unlimited marketplace, a place that I could go to and search for anything and download it. That's why I'm super glad that Storyblocks is the sponsor of today's video because it's exactly what I wish I wanted during that time. You can see here on the website, you can browse by all of this stock video, you can search by backgrounds, you can also search for templates as well as music, sound effects, and images as well. And better yet, they now have a plugin for Premiere Pro and After Effects. So while you're inside of Premiere Pro, you can search for aerial stock video clips if you need them. And when you need to download it, you can click download and choose the 4K or the HD, for example and after you click it, it'll download directly into your project folder so you don't have to go to your downloads folder and move it inside of your project. It saves you that extra step. You can access all of the assets that you would on the website here inside of the panels. It's an unlimited access subscription and the subscription has a predictable cost because you just pay that flat fee per month and there's no other hidden fees. The licensing is easy. You can download and use any of the assets in any type of project that you're working on. So you can head over to storyblocks.com slash gal to go check out Storyblocks. All right, here's the man that you probably recognize holding his handheld microphone while dropping tons of dope music video effects. This is Josh Olufemi. Utilizing Mogarts. I use Mogarts when I make tutorials because it allows me to basically have a set animation that I've made that I can then edit and use over and over again without even having to go in After Effects. Mogarts used to kind of suck because they were very heavy as far as the processing power that they required, but now with this new update in Premiere, they're literally two times faster. It's amazing. I use Mogarts all the time. I have a specific series on my YouTube channel that require the exact same type of animations and composites that I just completely transformed into Mogarts, and I just use them over and over again. I don't even have to touch After Effects. It's crazy easy. You can do this for either media replacement Mogarts or just the regular text Mogarts. So the next tip is a huge time saver that I wish I knew when I first started, and it's applying color changes at the source master level. If I go up to Lumetri Color, you can see right now I have the clip selected, but right next to that is the source. If you click on this, this will affect the entire source clip itself, even when there's cuts applied. So what I can do is click on auto, which is a auto color AI feature. And if I select this, it'll move these sliders to the best possible image that it can be. And you can adjust the intensity of it. I say around here is good. I'm going to reduce the highlights just slightly. All right, next up is Javier Mercedes. He also runs a fantastic YouTube channel giving all sorts of great tips in Premiere Pro and After Effects. All right, Javier, what is a tip that you would give your younger editing self? Let's say I wanna take this section of clips right here, this light blue section and flip flop it with this orange sections. I'm gonna grab all of these blue clips, hold command and click and drag. And if I'm not holding command, notice how it creates this wall of arrows. If I were to drop it right here, it just put the clip right here and shuffled everything down the timeline. Now, if I highlight all of these clips and let's say I wanted to flip flop these two sections, if I hold command and option at the same time, then click and drag. Now we get this little, like, I don't know, reverse cursor thing going on. And I'm gonna bring it to this side of the orange. And hopefully when I let go, you will see that it flip flops the two. It keeps everything where it needed to be and it flip flopped all of the clips. 
So my next tip is about sound mixing. When I was first starting out, I thought that I knew everything about sound, but I didn't know. I was just going based off of my ears, being like, oh, that sounds good, but I didn't actually know the science of it. So dialogue, it should average around minus six decibels, and it shouldn't peak too high because then it's gonna sound distorted. So between minus six and minus 12 on average, is good. Now, if music is playing behind the dialogue, it should be around minus 18 to minus 25 decibels. Now, the good thing is that you don't really have to memorize these amounts. The Essential Sound Panel in Premiere Pro can make it easy for you. For example, here I have this clip of me talking, this video, I'm gonna show and you can look at the decibel levels the here. It's a little bit like quiet. Sound. It's between minus 15 and minus 12. So I can go up to Essential Sound, go to Dialog, and if you're editing for broadcast and you wanna make sure it's at the correct loudness level, you can click Auto Match and it will adjust the loudness, the loofs, of your audio clip. But in this Today's case, it's video, still a little low. What you can do is adjust the clip volume level. So you can increase this up a few decibels. Video editing tools that can actually save you a ton of time. So that's a little bit better, right? Because it's between minus six and minus 12 on average. But let's say you wanna add music. So now it just sounds way too loud against my dialogue. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you some video editing. So what we can do is select the music clip and now we can go to Essential Sound and select music. And when we select auto match, it automatically drops the waveform down and it sounds so much better. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you some video editing tools that can actually save you. If you need it to be a little bit lower, you can always adjust the clip volume here. One last tip for the audio, you can go to the audio track mixer and from the track level, if we open this little carrot up, because our dialogue is on audio track one, we can go down and apply a special mastering effect to give a little bit more clarity. So presets, subtle clarity, and we don't want too much reverb, so maybe around five. And we can also increase the output gain. So if your dialogue is still a little quiet, you can make this one, for example. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you some video editing tools that can actually save you a ton of time it sounds great, right? The thing with audio is if your audio isn't mixed correctly, it's distracting for the viewer, right? So you wanna make it seamless. And so by using the essential sound panel and remembering those general levels that I introduced, it can help you improve your soundtrack. So that way you just are not kind of guessing the sound levels, you have a base to go from. And here's Ian from the Learn How to Edit Stuff YouTube channel. When working with client notes, always do the last notes first and the first notes last. Why? Well, typically clients will provide time code notes, either in an email or on something like Frame.io. And if one of the first notes is something like remove this section, now all your other notes are immediately out of sync from the time code notes, and it will be an absolute headache to deal with. But if you work from the back to the front, you will not encounter this issue. So if I could go back to baby Premiere Gal and tell her one huge tip that would help her out with editing, it would be to collaborate as much as possible because editing is a very solo process, especially when you're working for yourself. It can feel a little bit like self-doubt is creeping in and you start to question your decisions. It doesn't hurt to make friends in the editing community to send them your sequence and be like, hey, what do you think of this? Even if you do believe the edit is good, it's just good to get that reassurance, reassur reassurance. <laughs> That's why I'm super happy that I work with an editing team right now because we can collaborate together. They can bring new creativity to the edit that I maybe didn't have time to implement myself. It gives a different perspective. And I'm also glad that I reached out to all the other YouTuber friends here because they also have more insight and experience. And that's what I love about the editing community is that we all are like problem solvers and we all wanna help each other out, right? That's why Google is so strong for editors because you can type in a question and you're probably gonna find an answer. And that's part of the reason why I created this YouTube channel is I really wanted to share easy to access tips from whatever level that you're coming from. And there's no intimidation here. So if you have any questions about anything in this video, just leave a comment below. And if you wanna watch some more tips on this channel, you can click right over here and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much to all of my YouTube friends that came on here and gave some tips. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time, bye.
All right, I think that was pretty good. Yeah.